This episode is supported by The Great Courses Plus. When you think about life before the dinosaurs, if anything comes to your mind at all, chances are the one animal that you think of is Dimetrodon. With its lizard-like appearance and that distinctive sail on its back, Dimetrodon is practically the mascot of the Paleozoic era, a time before flowers, birds, mammals, and even crocodiles. Dimetrodon dominated the last period of the Paleozoic, the Permian period, alongside many other animals that can seem at once familiar and not. And that's because these creatures had jumbles of traits that were partly reptilian and partly mammalian, earning them the paradoxical sounding name, mammal-like reptiles. But these beasts don't belong on the reptile branch of the Tree of Life. Instead, you'll find them over on the mammal branch, because they're more accurately known as stem mammals. Yes, it could be easily mistaken for a primordial lizard, but Dimetrodon had a bunch of game-changing adaptations that foreshadowed the rise of mammals millions of years later. One of its most distinctive features, its weird variety of teeth. Dimetrodon's name actually means two-measure tooth, because before it and its kin came along, most animals had rows of teeth that were basically identical. Meat eaters, for example, tended to have simple, pointed teeth that all served the same function, to pierce through meat. But Dimetrodon had different teeth for different jobs, turning its mouth into a kind of physiological Swiss army knife. Up front, it had long, canine-like teeth for killing prey, but it also had distinct incisors and teeth in the back that pointed backward, perfect for dismembering carcasses. It was also among the earliest animals to have serrated teeth, making this stem mammal the perfect Permian butcher capable of devouring prey quickly and efficiently. And having more than one kind of tooth is a hallmark of our own mammal lineage. It eventually led to the diversity of teeth that we now have throughout the mammalian family, from the chisel-like incisors of rodents, to the dagger-shaped canines of cats, to the grinding molars of elephants. Before you eat your prey, though, you have to catch it. And here, Dimetrodon had a leg up on much of its quarry. You've probably seen pictures of Dimetrodon, and odds are those pictures showed the animal in a sprawling posture, kind of like it's doing a push-up with its belly and tail dragging on the ground. But fossil tracks in Oklahoma, which some experts think were made by Dimetrodon, suggest that the animal was probably capable of what's known as a high walk. In this posture, its belly and much of its tail would have been raised off the ground, with its legs partially straight, giving it a stance somewhere between that of a lizard and that of a mammal. This stem mammal strut would not only have made Dimetrodon faster and more nimble than its prey, it also would have required much less energy than the sprawling posture used by, say, amphibians. Okay, now I'm sure you're wondering, what's up with that sail? For a long time, the sail of bone and skin on a Dimetrodon's back was thought to be some kind of temperature regulator. The thinking was that the sail could be turned toward the sun to absorb heat, while its large surface could release heat quickly when it was hanging out in the shade. Some experts stick to that theory, but in recent years, others have offered new ideas about the sail and what it can tell us about stem mammals. For one thing, these researchers note, big animals retain way more heat than small animals, so presumably bigger dimetrodons would need bigger sails. But there are some relatives of dimetrodon, like Sphenicodon here, that were plenty big but had tiny sails. Meanwhile, some smaller species had big sails, too big to regulate heat for such small animals. And in 2010, a study that compared dimetrodon specimens at different ages found that its sail grew really quickly, with juveniles sprouting sails that were disproportionately large for their body size. This suggested that rather than serving as a a solar panel, Dimetrodon might have used its sail for something even more crucial to its survival, to communicate with others of its kind. And here too, mammals ended up taking a page from the book of Dimetrodon. Lots of modern mammals, after all, are known for having flashy features, like the mane on a lion or the antlers of a deer, that advertise strength to enemies and help attract mates. Whether Dimetrodon's sail was used as a mating display or for threatening rivals is anyone's guess, but at the very least, this is one stem mammal that that had something to say to its neighbors, indicating that, as with mammals, communication was vital to its survival. With unique teeth, extra speed, and a complex social life, Dimetrodon was able to dominate early Permian environments. Its success allowed it to spread to many different habitats, including swamps and deserts from Canada to Texas to Germany. Alas, the reign of the Dimetrodon ended around 270 million years ago, and just 20 million years later, the environmental catastrophe at the end of the Permian, known as the Great Dying, spelled disaster for nearly all of the stem mammals. But all was not lost for our 
mammal lineage. The stem mammal's ability to adapt, which was embodied so well by Dimetrodon, allowed some to survive. And they went on to diversify over the next 20 million years, evolving into a range of forms from tiny burrowers to saber-toothed giants. And eventually, you and me. So we can't claim Dimetrodon as our direct ancestor. Other stem mammals have earned that title. But still, if you take a close look at this sail-backed animal, you might see a little bit of yourself. Thanks to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this episode. The Great Courses Plus is a digital learning service that allows you to learn about a range of topics from educators all over the world, including Ivy League professors. Go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash eons and get access to a library of different video lectures about science, math, history, literature, or even how to cook, play chess, or become a photographer. New subjects, lectures, and professors are added every month, like the science of flight, taught by Professor James W. Gregory. Professor Gregory covers everything from the physics of lift to breaking the sound barrier, which is awesome. With The Great Courses Plus, you can watch as many different lectures as you want anytime, anywhere, without any tests or exams you have to take. Help support this series and start your free one-month trial by clicking the link below or going to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash eons. So that's Dimetrodon. But we are curious what you want to know about the story of life on Earth. We're always looking for topics. We've got some in mind, but we're looking for yours as well. So leave a comment to let us know. And if you want more of this, please go to YouTube com slash eons to subscribe. Now do yourself a favor and check out some of our sister channels from PBS Digital Studios. Your brain will thank you.